morning to everyone from the International Space Station Flight Control Room here at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. It's a full house aboard the International Space Station with nine crew members living and working at the orbital outpost. The Expedition 71 crew, who you see now, are being led by Station Commander Oleg Kononenko. But the focus of attention today is on the Falcon 9 launch of the SS Francis R. Dick Scobie Cygnus cargo craft, named after the late commander of the Challenger STS 51L mission. Scobie served as pilot aboard Challenger on STS 41C in April of 1984, which retrieved, repaired, and redeployed the Solar Max science satellite. He was then the commander of the ill fated Challenger STS 51L mission in 1986. Northrop Grumman's resupply vehicle is poised to deliver roughly four tons of science, experiments, and equipment to the orbital outpost. After Cygnus separates from the upper stage of Falcon 9 today, the spacecraft will conduct a series of engine firings to increase its altitude to match that of the International Space Station. That will set it up for the start of joint operations between Northrop Grumman engineers in Dulles, Virginia, and the NASA flight control team here in Houston. A launch today will bring Cygnus to the station in the morning hours Tuesday. Tuesday, where NASA astronauts Matt Dominic and Jeanette Epps will be waiting in the cupola, set to use the station's robotic arm to reach out and grapple the spacecraft. That will be installed to the Earth-facing berthing mechanism on the Unity module for a stay of about five and a half months. And there you can see those clamp arms opening around the Falcon 9 second stage. We'll then start to see the strong back recline away from the vehicle. And there you can see that strong back moving away from the Falcon rocket. Now you may have noticed the white clouds building around the Falcon vehicle. Those white clouds are the chilled gas above the LOX tank, LOX tank that we vent overboard to maintain pressure in the tank as needed. And when that vented oxygen comes out into the warm Florida air, it condenses into clouds. Now, as I mentioned earlier today, uh, the booster supporting today's mission is flying for its 10th time, and a key indicator of this flight history is the soot that you might just be able to make out on the skin of the vehicle there. The, this soot comes from the carbon-based fuel of the rocket that gets deposited onto the body of the vehicle during re-entry through the Earth's atmosphere. Stage one locks load is complete. And good call out there that stage one locks loading is now complete on the Falcon 9 first stage. Now checkouts of the second stage thrust vector control actuators are underway. This is referred to as an engine gimbal or wiggle test. This is when SpaceX moves the nozzles ever so slightly to make sure that the guidance hardware is acceptable for flight. SpaceX does the same checkouts on the first stage engines, and that happens just seconds before ignition. Now we should be hearing a call stage out. Stage two locks load is complete. <laughs> and there's that call out right there for stage two locks loading completion. Now Cygnus is also performing its final health checks to make sure that all of its primary systems are ready for its rendezvous with the International Space Station. And as I mentioned earlier, those white clouds you see around the vehicle are complete. Gas launch closeout has started. Good call out there. Those white clouds are completely normal and are just the chilled gas above the LOX tank that we vent overboard to maintain pressure in the tank as needed. Now coming up in about 15 seconds from now, we should hear the call out that Falcon 9 will be in startup, which will mean that the rocket's launch computers will have taken over the count. Falcon 9 is in startup. 
And there's the call. Falcon 9 is now in startup. Cygnus is transitioning to internal power, and the Falcon 9 computers are in final pre-launch checks, instructing LD, the rocket through the final the seconds before liftoff. Both stages are now being pressurized for launch, and the range remains go for launch. T-minus 30 seconds. Seconds. Two minus ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ignition. Engine full power. And lift off of Falcon Nine. Go SpaceX. Go Cygnus. NG twenty one. Falcon Nine and Cygnus take flight. The SS Dick Scobie is en route to the International Space Station. Stage one propulsion is nominal. As you saw, successful liftoff from Space Launch Complex 40. Power and telemetry nominal. Good call out there. Coming up in just about 20 seconds from now, we should hear a call out for Max Q. The vehicle passes through Max Q, or the point of maximum aerodynamic pressure, when the increasing speed of Falcon and the decreasing air density combine to create. Falcon 9 is supersonic. To combine to create maximum aerodynamic pressure. And good call out there. Max Q. And there's that call out for Max Q. Coming up next are five events which will happen in rapid succession main engine cutoff, stage separation, second engine start, boost back burn start, and then fairing separation. Main engine cutoff, or MECO, is where all nine. Back, chill started. Good call out there. MECO is where all nine M1D engines on the Falcon 9 first stage shut down. This is followed by stage separation, or the separation of the first and second stages of Falcon. A few seconds later, the Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage will ignite to boost Cygnus to low Earth orbit, and this is called out as second engine start one, or SES-1. After that, Falcon 9's first stage will ignite... Vehicle is following a nominal trajectory. Th after that, Falcon 9's first stage will ignite again to orient itself to head back to land. And shortly thereafter, the two fairing halves will separate and expose the spacecraft to the vacuum of space. We should be hearing the first of those callouts happening in just a, a few moments from now. Main engine cutoff. Stage separation confirmed. And back ignition. Stage one boost back startup. Fairing separation confirmed. And there we heard the callouts for all five of those events, which again were MECO, followed by stage separation, then SES-1, boost back burn start, and fairing separation. Now coming up shortly, we should hear a callout for completion of the boost back burn on the Falcon 9 first stage. This burn, which will last in total about 50 seconds, is the first of three burns the booster needs to go through to make its way back to landing zone one at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. Boost back shut down. And there's that call out for boost back shutdown on the Falcon 9 first stage. This is SpaceX's 74th mission for 2024 and the fifth flight to the orbiting laboratory this year. Now, in order to make its way back to land today, the Falcon 9 first stage has two more burns to execute. Next up is the entry burn, where three of the Merlin engines will reignite. This helps to slow the stage down as it re-enters the upper part of the Earth's atmosphere. And following the entry burn, the booster will go through its landing burn. And this is a single engine burn that brings the vehicle speed down rapidly in order to land back on Earth. 
We should be hearing the call out for that entry burn in just about two minutes from now. Now, during the entry burn, Falcon 9 is decelerating by firing its Merlin engines, but the rocket is still moving really fast, and this causes the vehicle to fly through Merlin's exhaust gases, or plume, which deposit a layer of soot onto the vehicle surface. And that soot comes from the carbon-based fuel that Falcon 9 uses, and with each flight, the soot builds up a little more on the outside of the vehicle. Now, as a reminder, on the left-hand side of your screen is the Falcon 9 first stage as it makes its way back to Earth, and on the right side is the MVAC engine on the second stage currently carrying Cygnus to orbit. The Merlins on the first stage are optimized for sea level, and these achieve 190,000 pounds of thrust each during ascent and descent. Now, the MVAC engine, with a much wider nozzle, is optimized to 220,500 pounds of thrust in vacuum. You may have also noticed on the left-hand side of your screen, Falcon 9 is equipped with four hypersonic grid fins, which are positioned near the top of the first stage. And stage one is using nothing but grid fins for steering as it returns to Earth. They orient the rocket during re-entry and guide it during its descent back to Earth. Beautiful views of the MVAC engine currently carrying the Cygnus spacecraft orbit. Now, with the booster on the left-hand side of your screen, you may occasionally see little white puffs, and those are nitrogen gas bursts, which are used for attitude control. Both vehicles continue to follow nominal trajectories. Good call out there. Now, that entry burn will be for the first stage, which is on the left-hand side of your screen. Stage one, entry burn startup. And good call out there for entry burn startup on the Falcon 9 first stage. Stage one entry burn shut down. And there's that call Stage out one FTS has saved. And there's that call out for entry burn shutdown on the Falcon 9 first stage. Now the first stage is also equipped with four landing legs made of state-of-the-art carbon fiber with aluminum honeycomb. Placed symmetrically around the base of the rocket, they deploy just prior to landing. If successful, this will be the tenth time that we've recovered this particular booster and the 335th time that we've recovered. Both vehicles continue to follow nominal trajectories. 335th time that we've recovered a first stage booster since our first successful landing in 2015. And we did have a good call out there for vehicles following nominal stage trajectories. One transonic. Amazing view of the Falcon 9 booster as it makes its way back to landing zone one at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. Stage one landing burn. Landing like deploy. Stage one landing confirmed. A spectacular touchdown of our Falcon 9 booster at landing zone one at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. Now again, this booster just completed its 10th flight and the 335th successful Stage landing. Stage 2 has entered terminal guidance. 335th successful Stage landing. Stage 2 FTS has saved. For an overall class rocket, including both Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy missions. And good call outs there on the nets. Now coming up at around the eight and a half minute mark, we should hear a call out for second engine cutoff one or SECO one, which is when the MVAC engine on the second stage shuts down. And that'll conclude the roughly six minute burn by this engine needed to get Cygnus into the proper orbit for eventually intercepting the International Space Station. We should hear that call out in just a couple moments. MVAC shut down. And there's that call out for the MVAC shutdown on the Falcon 9 second stage. We're now waiting for confirmation of good orbit. Nominal orbit insertion. And there's that call out for nominal orbital insertion. As a reminder, this is SpaceX's fifth mission, mission headed to the International Space Station so far this year, following Crew-8, CRS-30, NG-20, and AX-3.
Following separation, Cygnus will have a nearly 40-hour transit to the space station, where the station's Canadarm2 will grapple Cygnus, and the spacecraft will attach to the Unity module's Earth-facing port for cargo unloading by the Expedition 71 crew. We should be hearing that call-out for payload deployment in just about 25 seconds from now. Should be hearing that call out any moment, any moment for payload deployment of the Cygnus spacecraft. Cygnus deploy confirmed. And there you have it, a successful spacecraft separation. The Cygnus spacecraft is now on its way to the International Space Station and, as mentioned, is expected to arrive about 40 hours from now.